In a previous tutorial, I showed you the six basic path commands that you will end up using while you are creating in Inkscape. Today, I'm going to be showing you the next five, the more advanced path commands. Hello my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another Inkscape tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you the advanced path commands. So without further ado, let's get started. Now when I come to my path menu, as you can see, you can see that there are six standard path commands. This is union, difference, intersection, exclusion, division and cut path. Well, today I'm going to be showing you how to use combine and the difference between combine and union, break apart, split path, fracture and flatten. Now, as you can see on screen, I have four circles, two at the top overlapping each other and two at the bottom. Now, one of the main questions you will be asking yourself is, well, what's the difference between union and combine? Well, the difference is very subtle, but can come in very, very useful. Now, if I was to select these top two circles, I will go to path and union. And as you would expect, it has joined both of them together, like they've fused both of the circles into one shape but if i was to come down to this bottom one and i was to come to path combine as you can see the intersecting parts between the two circles that disappeared while using union have not disappeared here and that's because it has joined everything together but it still allows you to manipulate all of the nodes that were there previously. So as you can see, we have the four nodes for the right circle, one, two, three, four, and the four for the left circle, two. However, with this one, we can still manipulate all of the separate nodes. Whereas with this one, all of the nodes from the intersecting parts have disappeared. That is the fundamental difference between union and combine. So sometimes when you are wanting to keep the shapes and all the nodes contained within, then you need to use combine rather than union. Whereas union will take all the shapes and join them together as one complete shape. And the reason that I used the strokes rather than a fill is because it's very, very easy to see the difference when you're using strokes than it is when you're using a solid fill color. Now, the next two path commands I'm going to show you at the same time, and I am going to use text in order to do it because it's a lot easier. Now, as you can see on screen, I have two text objects, one here and one here. Now, the reason I have done this is because these two next commands are pretty similar, but will come into their own in different ways. Now, when it comes to these text objects, I am going to have to highlight them both and convert them into a path before any of the path commands will work. So we are going to go to path and object to path. Now they are no longer text objects and they are paths. Now with this top one, I am going to go to path and we're going to go down to break apart. And as you can see, we now have new objects that are being created in the center of all these shapes. Now what break apart has done is, well, exactly as the name implies. It has broken the entire path up into its individual pieces. 
Now for every piece that is separate by the outside edge, so as you can see, this S is not overlapping with anything, neither is this one or this, so they are now all separate objects. However, when it comes to any objects that had a void in the middle, like a P, an R, the O, these have now been separated, but it has also created new shapes that will go in the middle. But you also need to be aware that when it does this, the shape that is left behind will be completely filled too. So if I was to just drag this R down, as you can see, this is all one complete shape, but the void that was in the middle of this R is now separated out. Now, like I said, this is break apart and split path is very similar. The difference with split path to break apart is all of these voids that you can see within the P, the R, the O, the B, all of these will remain as they are and no new shapes like this one will be created. So now with this one selected, I'm going to go to path and split path. Now, as you can see, it has done exactly the same thing, but not created any new shapes. So if you have a object that has many different pieces within it and you want to separate them all out, you can do split path. Next is fracture and flatten. Again, these two work hand in hand, but do slightly different things. As you can see, I have this hexagon with two rectangles placed on top. So as you can see, this hexagon is at the bottom. The large rectangle is in the middle. And then on top of that, we have a small rectangle. And this is exactly the same underneath as well. So now we're going to draw a bounding box over all of the shapes at the top. And I'm going to show you exactly what these two path commands will do and why they are slightly different. So if we go to path and come down to fracture, what this has done is separated all of the shapes into their individual pieces. This becomes more obvious when I deselect everything and then just select the hexagon, for example, and move that away. As you can see, it has now been cut out and the hexagon that remained is still there, but that has also been broken up. So if I move these just off to the side, every individual piece that you can see are all the overlapping areas. So the top layer will cut out from the middle layer and the middle layer will cut out from the bottom layer and so on. But what this has done is separated them all into their individual pieces, taking into account these shapes. What it has done is taken the outside edge of every single piece and cut through any other intersecting pieces in a straight line to match. So as you can see, this piece has now been separated from this one going along the line of the hexagon and the same for this. Now the difference between this one and the next one is it will only go off what shapes it can see. So instead of using the line here that was overlapping and these lines here that were also overlapping, if we select all of this one and go path, flatten, it will only take into account what it can see. So any of the objects that are layered underneath the objects on top will not be taken into account and that is the fundamental difference between the two. However, with this one, it will also take into account 
the stroke that you have as well. So now when I select this shape and I move it away, as you can see, the stroke is now separate and it has already been converted into a path. It is no longer a stroke. Now, when we get the hexagon, this has also had any of the objects laid on top cut away from it. And again, this one, do I move this off? That is its own shape along with the stroke. And that has been cut out of this shape, which was in the middle, if you remember, and this one was at top. So this could be a little bit more complicated to get your head around. But once you have learned how it works and what it does, it becomes very easy to understand what is happening with all the shapes. So my suggestion, as always, is to go and experiment. Try using them for yourself because once you understand exactly how they work, your workflow will become much, much easier. Did you know that you can become a member of the Button Press Graphics YouTube channel? Well, now you do. You will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel, enabling me to make much better content in the future. Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time.